Yeah, I can see the handwriting on the wall. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. It's, uh, it's not for really for me. It might, I had my time, and I grew up with the older guides and, and the history of the river, uh, but this is my, my grandchildren. I love for them to be able to come and enjoy it on the river and the, the fishing aspect of it. And, but if the federal government don't step in and do something, it's going to be lost. There's, uh, there's so many stripers now in the, in the river. It's, uh, they're, they're eating everything that could be seen. I mean, not only that, but stripers right now in the pools, my guests in camp now, they're convinced the pool is nice and quiet, and all of a sudden it would be a striper too. The water jump, and then the salmon, it, it just boil. I mean, the water just boils, and they, they figure that the stripers are chasing the salmon. And so what's going to happen is the stripers are still here when the salmon start to spawn. What, what, about the, what, what about the few eggs that are going to be spawned? Are they going to clean them up too? We have no idea. But uh, as quick as they do something, get those stripers out of the river, do something, or it's, it's going to be lost. We, we're, we're having a lot of problems. We could see this coming for a number of years now, and we've been talking with DFO for a number of years, uh, but we've seen little in the way of solutions. Uh, we've seen the numbers go up and up over the years to the point uh, where we got to 300,000 approximately last year. Uh, this year, the bass numbers have exploded to 900,000. I don't think anybody saw 900,000 coming, but at 300,000, we were deeply concerned that we had a big problem. And, uh, but 900,000 is, uh, is over the top. Uh, I'm really not sure at this point how we recover from 900,000 striped bass in our river system. We need to encourage anglers to catch the striped bass. I hear they're wonderful eating, so we need to encourage the rules to change so that people can retain striped bass so that they can fish them and uh, that maybe we can encourage commercial fishery of the striped bass to help cut down the population to more sustainable levels and that maybe the salmon and the striped bass can share the river at some point, but right now it's a very one-sided battle against the salmon, and the salmon need our help. I'm just another concerned fisherman, and, and uh, you know, we're getting more concerned every year. We're getting more bass here in the river every year, and uh, it is becoming a serious situation, and we're very concerned. Hi, uh, my name is Sean Betts. I'm with Souter Salmon Club. Uh, it's a club on the uh, southwest Miramichi River. So we just arrived here not long ago and my brother Gary uh, went out to, to try fishing for a minute and he was no time, ended up hooking a striped bass. So this is not typical, uh, you know, for, for a major salmon pool to, to have this many striped bass in it. So I floated the pool the other day and uh, probably saw between 30 to 40 striped bass in this pool, and, and not all of them were, were small. There were some very good sized uh, striped bass in the pool. We don't want to look back 10 years from now and say, you know, we should have done more. Now is the time that we have to act because, you know, there's so much at stake. There's so many jobs. All these small communities rely on all these jobs up and down the river. You know, I've been here all my life, and we never ever seen any striped bass in this part of the river ever. And now it's a real common thing to see them here. And they're not up here just touring around. I mean, they're up here eating salmon par or whatever they can find for sure. So. One guy last week caught three bass in one morning. That's more than I've caught in my life. But I don't fish anymore, I guide. <laughs> but it's, it's got to stop. It really has to stop. Um, I know that Miramichi, the city, really benefits from that striper industry, but it's such a small window. It's six, uh, three weeks, seven, three weeks, four weeks that uh, people are there, and it's really busy down there, but it's a small industry. It's a $2 million industry. Salmon fishing was $47 million, you know, so we can't trade a $2 million industry for a $47 million industry, you know, so we need to make sure that we get this under control or try our best, you know. Our biggest fear is, are we too late? You know, can we, if we don't soon get someone to realize that, yeah, this is a real problem and we need to move forward and do a commercial harvest to get the numbers under control, um, you know, we could be in real trouble.
I think it's a total lack of, uh, of management on the, depart on the part of the DFO. I think they just totally dropped the ball in the last 50 years. There's been millions of dollars spent through the Salmon Federation, through the MSA, thousands and thousands of volunteer hours. And here we are in 2018 and the salmon is still declining. And now we've got the problem with the stripers. So, you know, you don't want to just kill all the stripers. That ain't practical to, to save those few salmon left. Uh, so I think it's time that DFO, you know, like takes some responsibility and, and protects and does something about the salmon and hopefully uh, implement a, you know, a managed, a well-managed and careful commercial fishery for the stripers. That would help get the numbers down to a reasonable level. And then, uh, you know, forge straight ahead into the CAST program.